Hi everyone, this is James from Buzzard Lighting. This is the Eclipse uh, 101 videos, uh, second video in these little series of videos that we're going to have uh, showing you how to use the Eclipse DMX software. Um, in this video we're going to go over um, adding some more fixtures and you know, maybe and creating like a, a static uh, scene. So what we'll do is, uh, obviously a, a quick note in the video is uh, for my mouse. If you see a red starburst like that, that is left click. If you see a blue starburst like this, that is a right click. So just keep that in mind, you know, when you're watching the video and you see uh, red or blue bursts in the mouse. Just lets you know if I'm left or right clicking. Alright, so we only have four fixtures patched here. Uh, there are four uh, flurry cues in 12 channel mode. But, uh, you know, we're going to want to maybe program some other fixtures. So, what we'll do is we're actually going to go to patch, do load slash patch new fixture. And select some wizard lighting, of course. Let's select some uh, uh, Puck 3NX 6-channel fixtures. And the current fixture is patch. It's going to start at 49, and we're going to want to do another 4 of them. And yeah, right now we can even decide to turn off the fade for the different channel or the RGB color mixing or if they were moving heads for the pan to tilt um, we can put them in different views if we had uh, multiple views set up over here we could patch these to that view uh, we don't have another view set up yet but we're gonna get to that in a minute so load slash patch fixtures like the auto create fixture groups yes Confirm that they're loaded, okay. And now you'll see that we have Puck 3 Linux. Can I even, can even just uh, move these around? Just uh, click, drag. And so, like I said earlier, we only have one view. So, you know, say you have three different types of fixtures, you know, uh, like you have a set of pucks, a set of flare cues, and then a set of, you know, like uh, I-60s or Torrent 90s or maybe, you know, a, a different brand when we hit. Uh, you can just go ahead and create Add View. You can then rename it. And for our pucks, do puck 3NX. Okay, now you see that we don't have anything in here yet, but what we can do is, as we're patching, uh, we can select that view like I just showed you as we added these in, or we can select all these and then right click, and then change fixtures view slash layer, and then put them in puck 3 x so they automatically disappear from this view, now they're right here same spot too and everything so it, it'll retain your layout um, so now we have two different views going on which is uh, handy if you have a lot of fixtures for in your setup and it's a good way to stay organized so that's you know that's a uh, add in some fixtures and uh, different views and stuff like that so but let's go ahead and just create like a static uh, scene or look so we'll just uh, select our Puck 3 and X's. Can go to shutter. It's the show rate. Beam. Turn the dimmer on. See that you click this, you get your dimmer fader. You can even see the output change in these little windows here. And then we'll go to color. Um, adjust our color. There's normal RGB. It gives you RGB hues. 
Roscoe, which is really popular, you get actual uh, RGB values put on your fixtures according to Roscoe color specs. And there's Lee. And back to normal. And once again, this checkbox here is for if you had, say, like um, a fixture with your RGBW, RGBA, RGBAW, turning this on allows you to include the amber or white channels. So it even says if you mouse over it, use white slash amber in color mix. So it's gonna take into take that channel into account when you're mixing the colors. Uh, the puck terrain X is just RGB so it's not gonna take those into account. But the flare cues are so what we can do is go back to shutter then we're back up. You'll notice if I do 50% or so, if I hold down the control key and then select these as well, that now they're both selected. So I can actually do the colors together. So they're all going to be like a light blue. But the flare cues are going to be using that white just a little bit better than the Puck 3 and X as well. But they should match. So it's something that's really cool that you could just select all of them together. So say this is our look. We want to save it. Then just simply go down here save changes as button we have our cross fade in and out options that will fade in fade out the, the look um, anytime it's uh, activated or deactivated uh, we can save certain channels only for some fixtures like uh, default saves everything that's in there uh, pan and tilt only would be if you created uh, moving light sequences and stuff like that. Color slash gobo only would be for you know uh, RGB LED colors um, or RGB W, RGB A, RGB A W. Uh, color wheels, gobo wheels for moving head fixtures. Uh, use sequence fade time. Use fade scene settings. That's these down here. Which would be you know fade up, fade down. Delay, delay down, hold time, uh, stuff like that. Uh, select the method that will start to control tempo for the sequence when loaded from a sequence shortcut. Uh, I generally just use auto. You can use audio to start it or manual start. Um, so we'll name this one right here L. Blue for because it's a light blue. Save sequence. So you'll see it, it'll be down here flashing. You turn it on. Your scenes are playing back. Turn it off. And your scenes are off. So that's you know, the very basics of creating a static look. You know, or you could uh, you know just go here, select these. Turn on your dimmers, pick a color here, or you know, go to your faders and just kind of uh, manually mix your own colors, you know. The, uh, the output view of here, you see the colors, they're, they're not going to take into account the white or amber channels because, you know, the computers can't really mix white into a color that well. So just you know, take note of that. And if you if you hold the mouse at certain levels on the fader, it'll move the fader slower or faster. So if I click it here, that move very fast. If I bring my fader up slowly, it starts to get faster. If I go like this, it goes as fast as I can. Or I click off, 
or click full, or we can even click the number here and enter in a value if you already know it. Uh, you can also use a scroll wheel on your mouse to go up and down, you know, per value. So it's really cool stuff. So let's just go ahead and just do like purple for those. Once we'll select those, I'm um, holding down the control key as I select multiple fixtures. Next, oh, I don't even have to go back to the the beam palette up here. I can just simply go to my intensity channels and max up the dimmer. You see that it even does it for the fixture down here. So if I turn this at uh, 2:15, did that up here as well. So again, we can, uh, you know, do green and blue, so you get uh, cyan, purple type colors going on for every other fixture. And once again, once we're done, um, it doesn't matter if you click them on, uh, if you have anything selected or not, just go down here, hit the save button. And do cyan. Cyan or purple. You can even fade it in or out, as I mentioned earlier. So this one's gonna fade in one second, and fade out. So save sequence. It's flashing down here. So you can fade it in and fading out. Light blue. You know, say we didn't have all of our fixtures recorded in one of these scenes, but the other one had all of them in. So, uh, you know, we could even stack these by holding down the control key, and you know, both of them play at the same time. And it's going to work off of you know latest takes. But since we use all fixtures in both of these scenes here, you know, only one's going to go on at a time. Since so, now they're all cyan. Now they're all cyan and purple. Alright, so that is a pretty basic run through. I'm just creating a static scene or static look, a type of deal. Uh, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave us a comment or shoot us an email at support at blizzardlighting.com uh, Once again, my name is James and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, you know, let us know if you guys have any questions. Thanks.